Okay students, welcome back. This is part two and we are looking at more theories of language acquisition. We looked at the nativist theory first on the previous video and so now we are looking at the behaviorist, the social cognitive and you'll see on the next slide the sociocultural theory. In the behaviorist theory and it's put forward by the school of behaviorism, individuals acquire language or language is developed as parents and children interact and as parents reinforce the words and songs that their children make so that this reinforcement might be a smile a good boy good girl wow that's nice see that again these comments encourage children to reproduce sounds or words that they may have used uh, because they realize it has it has brought the parents joy or happiness and that they have done something good so the reinforcement acts as a stimulus or acts as a response to the stimulus of the words that they produce and as you can see in the picture the father is interacting with a little girl or a little boy it more looks like a little boy to me and the little boy is probably saying da da and the father is saying very good very nice and smiling and they interact and exchanging language and so all this level of interaction encourages the children to use the language more and more similarly in the source social social culture cognitive theory sorry this theory emphasizes the role of of role models or the role of models in terms of speech development so parents would speak certain uh, speak a certain way use certain words use certain expressions and you will find that children just as in the picture depicts this little girl paying very close attention to her mommy children at this age they are taking in language as if they were sponges and so everything the parents see all the words they try to imitate the words they try to reproduce the words and where they make mistakes in this social cognitive theory the parents would help them to correct these mistakes and improve on the use of the language you may even extend their speech by reproducing what they are trying to say and, and saying it properly using the correct grammar extending the language so through that means the children learn and through the use of their bigger brothers or sisters as models children imitate speech and that imitation is a means of developing and growing in their language skill and competence so that is the behaviorist view where the language that is used the words and songs that children produce are reinforced by positive statements and by um, positive actions of their parents or their teachers and the social cognitive is that view where persons who are already proficient in the language act as models and the speech that children hear they seek to reproduce so we can move on now to the socio-cultural theory of language development and this one states that language is a function of culture and day-to-day -day experiences as you can see from the, pic the picture that the mom is interacting with a little baby while she is feeding her him or her again it's difficult to identify what gender the child is and through those daily exchanges so the mom could be saying oh you like this you like the you like the, the porridge or you like the soup or you like the mashed potato whatever she's feeding the child at a particular time and she would say it in, in a certain voice like use moderates a soft a little high-pitched tone and these day-to-day -day experiences so the mom will say, well, after you finish eating this food, I'll take you outside for a little walk, or we'll go to the park, or you'll spend some time playing with your little brother or your, your sister. And so those day-to-day -day experiences, and you can see a laptop on the desk, and mom might say, this is a laptop, um, mommy is feeding you now, and so the, the, the child learns specific expressions that are unique to the particular culture that the child is in and so language is a function of social interaction as well as cultural expressions of those interactions so 
children are scaffolded by their parents or by the adults that they are growing with and um, and as we spoke about the zone of proximal development in the face-to-face um, -face lecture that we had in class children would learn by the parents using simple words and the words becoming more and more complex and one word and two word phrases and they extend their speech and so the children are move from one point in their language development to another through this socio-cultural theory. Um, additionally, we now look at how languages de develop in terms of stages. First, we have the hollow phrases that are used by toddlers like one word or two word utterances and they adjust their intonation to state whether it's a question, a statement or demand. They may say tea, meaning that they want more tea. Or they may say mama, mama, meaning that they, they want their mama. Or they may point and indicate go on, mama go on or daddy go on. And this is a means of expressing an entire sentence. But it's a hollow phrase because it's just a short one word or two word utterance. Um, in this case, there, is, there can also be overgeneralization where the child may refer to an object that looks similar to one that they know and that they have been able to name and call all objects that look similar to that by the same name so that the child might identify this entire group of vehicles as cars. So they may be driving with their parent, they may be traveling on the road and they may see this motorbike and they may say that's a car, this dump truck they may call that a car, the school bus they may call a car, the fire, the fire engine they may call a car, the police car they may call a car as well. So at this point they are over generalizing because they think that any vehicle that moves and makes a song like a car and it's on the road like cars, then it is also a car. So this, is an, this shows the need for accommodation where they need to create different categories for vehicles. And in creating these different categories, the parent will correct and say, no, this is a bus, this is a truck, this is a fire engine or a fire truck, this is a van. And so the child will develop um, a wider vocabulary and may move away from overgeneralizations to um, identification of specific vehicles by their vehicle type. There can also be under generalizations where they use the word too narrowly. So they may say something like they may call their own pet, if this is their pet here, these little ones, they may say this is a doggy, but they may not want to identify other dogs as doggy as well because they being in that egocentric stage they think that only their dog should be is a doggy and the other dogs are something else so that this under generalization would also need to be corrected by by parents in terms of the entire classification of dogs and then the parent can also improve their language skill by saying okay this is a collier this is a boxer dog this is a chihuahua or whatever the type of dog is. I'm not so sure that I identify the correct type of dogs here in this picture anyway. But you get the point where under generalizations where they use words too narrowly. So their dog is the only doggy and the other dogs could be called something else. Whereas over generalization where they call identify all vehicles as cars instead of identifying the different kinds of vehicles that you would find on the road. So parents have some work to do in that respect as well. Language is also further developed through fine tuning and, um, and the fine tuning may, may take the form of grammatical fine tuning where they may understand big, bigger, biggest and they may think that that can also be used with bad and they will think say words like badder or worsest and they may think that okay you the past tense of right might be righted as the past tense, uh, so the irregular verbs like buy, they may talk about buy instead of bought because they know um, the past tense of place played, and so they may uh, extend the verb 
tenses incorrectly and they may overgeneralize in the use of the past tense of certain regular verbs when they meet irregular verbs because they don't know the, the rules change for irregular verbs. So the fine tuning would take place as parents hear them, use these overgeneralizations and correct them. Additionally, we have at age three, they begin to use sentences. Um, they might say, want more juice? And so the parent may ask the question, do you want more juice? And uh, that dialogue would take place. Or they may say, no want more juice. And the parent might ask, do you want any more juice? Just to confirm and just to articul articulate for the child the way questions are asked and that they should be saying, I do not want any more juice. I see the little picture here of the guy chugging a whole bottle of juice. Okay. Language acquisition by age six, they can use complex sentences or combined sentences, show cause and effect relationships, use active and passive tenses, and again that is developed through interaction, as you see parental interaction and children as they interact with their peers as well. So in the first case you show the first sentence shows a cause and effect. They say the boy fell because he was running too fast. They can also say the girl dropped the book on the floor, showing a cause and a consequence. And the book was dropped, or they can reverse and say the book was dropped on the floor by the girl. So the first sentence in red is an active sentence, and the second sentence is a passive sentence. Of course, when they begin to develop these skills by age six, we can say that they're ready for um, school in terms of their foundation. Uh, for reading and writing is intact. So we'll stop at this point as well.